good? Yeah. All right. When you're ready. Yep. Are we good to go? Yep. All right, so my name is Jackson Grenzweig. This is Ethan Day, and we'll be presenting on Boeing. So to start off with a little bit of a history lesson, um, Boeing was founded in 1916 by William E. Boeing. And in the very early years of its, uh, in the very early years of the company, they developed a very strong relationship with the U.S. military, being contracted to make these nice Model Cs in World War One. Although their prime time actually came in uh, in World War Two, where they were contracted again to make the B-17. The B-17 was one of their um, was one of their trophies. It was considered the best plane of World War Two, and then on they cemented themselves as a as a real company to stay. Since then. They have expanded out farther, creating the 707, which was the first um, jet airliner and set the standard for commercial airlining then on. They created the, um, the rocket that actually landed men on, on uh, the moon, and now they have started expanding into submarines, also being contracted by the US military. Although coming on some rough times with the 737 MAX, they have already started efforts to come back from this. They have replaced their CEO with this nice man, Dave Calhoun, and they are working on transparency with pilots because a lot of this could, a lot of this conundrum started from people not knowing how the plane exactly worked, and it all just kind of got blown out of proportion. So the threat of new entrants is virtually none, since there is such an extreme amount of capital required to enter this industry. There's very few people in the world that would even be possible financing this, and they just don't want to get into it. Regulatory hoops are very difficult and expensive. Also, the engineering and tech is not simple at all. It takes around 10 years for Boeing or Airbus to conceive a new plane and then get it in the air. Boeing and Airbus own 91% of the industry, so they're the dominant players. There's not much room for anybody else. Furthermore, defense contracts with the U.S. are very hard to get and not easily thrown around. The bargaining power of buyers is also fairly minimal. There's only two companies to buy from, Boeing and Airbus. It's in both companies' interest to keep prices high. In the best case scenario, it takes three to five years to get a plane. So airlines don't want to back out of these contracts because something like the MAX happens and there's some bad press then they need to start this clock all over again. The US military is not stingy with uh, paying up, and they have minimal options, so they're happy to fund Boeing as needed. But all airlines negotiate their own deals with different uh, plane manufacturers, and then they also buy in bulk, which reduces prices even more. In the short term, the threat of substitute products is very low. However, in the, high, in the longer term, it will be higher. The major risk is bullet trains. They could render the airline industry obsolete. But bullet trains are not economical yet and will not be for a very long time. Planes are getting faster and more efficient, so they will be more ready to compete with bullet trains once they finally catch up. Aircraft will always be necessary in the defense industry too, because air superiority is an important part of the military. Boeing doesn't only do planes that we've touched on. So even if the airline industry were to completely go away tomorrow, it's not like Boeing would be left out to dry. Also, it's realistic for Boeing to possibly transition into bullet trains since they have the skills necessary to manufacture these complex objects. The bargaining power of suppliers is fairly mild. Since there's only two options, they get to dictate the price. But the FAA, has absolute total control over what flies and what doesn't. And every plane has to be green-lighted, and if they're not happy, they can ground them indefinitely. There's no negotiating quality with the US military either, so Boeing has to live up to their standards. So looking at the great company metrics, um, a lot of what you see is going to be red with very little green. A lot of this is actually caused from the 737 MAX, which is purely temporary. A lot of these problems that are showing up are going to go away eventually. If the 737 MAX were to be completely wiped off of shelves, then they would have their 737 or 747 to fall back on. But um, they already have $10 billion of 737 MAXs in sales that they cannot 
sell to people yet because the plane has not been greenlighted. So as soon as they are greenlighted, they are good to sell, which will make all of this red go away. So for the good price metrics, we see that again, Boeing is mostly red, and that it is worse compared to almost all of our benchmarks. However, this is not an accurate representation since planes are so expensive and margins are so small. When you compare Boeing to the industry, they're actually doing incredible. They're doing better than 81%, 78%, 76%, and 77%. So it's really good. One worrying statistic, however, is the margin of safety is very low. But this is caused by that 737 MAX crisis. Once the FFA lifts, FAA lifts their ban, we expect that will get into a greener territory. Um, I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but the final verdict is a buy. The 737 MAX crisis provides a unique opportunity to buy Boeing stock at a really good price. Boeing is sitting on $4 billion of MAXs that will be instantly sold once the FAA lifts their ban, and that will see almost all those statistics turn green. This year, they would have made $3.3 billion. Instead, they posted a loss of 700 million, which was lower than most analysts expected and actually saw the stock rise. So confidence in Boeing is still extremely high. Boeing also hasn't laid off any employees in wake of this crisis, which is an extremely good sign and shows that they are very confident in what they do. Boeing is an amazing company at a really good price, and in conclusion, you should buy Boeing. Any questions? It's expected to be lifted mid-2020. Oh, it's it's okay. very unlikely. Once the problems are fixed and the technology is proven safe, they'll be back up in the air. And airlines prefer to fly this plane because it's more efficient, it's easier to fly, it's the best plane on the market. Anyone else?